Right, so we're going to do another um, soft low video. Um, for those of you who've watched these videos before, when I've been in my studio, a few things have gone wrong, but today I can promise you that nothing will go wrong because I'm all prepared. My light's got a charger on it. It's connected to the mains. Microphone, brand new microphone, which has just taken me about 20 minutes to so set up. But, um, so we're just going to look at lows. Now it's going to go wrong. Our last is not going to heckle me. It's going to be good. And I've got a proper brew as well. I've got a decent selection of soft lows. I've got a pretty wide selection of soft lows. That's actually a large one, but that's just so you can see it on camera. That's a relaxed copy toe she had. Um, and basically, it's a paddle tail. Loads, there's loads out there. You don't have to get the same ones as me. But that, that is a good one that works. Um, there's loads of varieties. Um, just have a look. Honestly, don't, don't confuse yourself. and Just go for one. If you like it, buy it. Um, the good thing about soft lows as opposed to hard lows is sometimes a fish will grab on. It'll hold on a little bit longer. Uh, give you a little bit of time to, to set the hooks. Where's the hard low? But sometimes grab and let go. Um, but uh, oh, oh, good of a good thing is a cheaper, a lot cheaper than, than hard lows. You can buy these for you know less than a quid sort of thing. You can buy you know depends what size it is. Um, and what you'll what you'll find, I've got that's a that's a three inch. I've got two and a half inch, which is probably one of my favourite sizes. Um, but I even got two two inch somewhere in relaxed copy to she had. Um, uh, pike perch, Xander, chub, trout, this sort of size. It's probably you will catch big perch on this sort of size. It is a good good size for perch, but um, that's probably a size I'll, I'll throw for, for pike. Um, and what you can see, I've got absolutely. I just grabbed loads here. I've got I've got loads of soft lows there. Right, I'm not I'm not the biggest collector of soft lows, but for perch fishing. I've got a bit of variety, and it is good to have a bit of variety. I've got loads of different bits of tackle, which we'll look at, we'll look through in a little bit. But simply, for a for a soft lure like that, the easiest way to to fish one. What I've got there, they're actually um, size four o is quite is, is good for a, a three inch relaxed copy to a shad. Where's my slow gun? On screen. And your basic aim is to get that hook to go a good chunk away down the body. That wants to come out so far down its body. Now, you, some people mark it, stick a you know a little nick in the in the plastic, just like there, with a little mark where the hook's going to come out. Once you get used to it, you know roughly where it is. But um, stick it through the nose. It's really <laughs> I'm really doing a tutorial video on something that's not exactly complicated or an exact science. It doesn't have to be perfect, and that's not perfect. So you'll see there's quite a lot of hooks stuck out there. Now, personally, I'd redo that one. Just dig in a bit more. There you go. See, there's quite a quite a substantial bit of hook stuck out there. Now, people who's you know you're fishing for um, other species of fish, perch, not just pike, but perch and chub and all these things. You won't be using big hooks. You'd be using size, whatever. Uh, you know your hook, hook size. Uh, that's a, the three o. That's a decent size hook. Um, you've got a lot to have, got to have a lot protruding, and the reason for that is if you had a smaller one, and the hook didn't didn't sit as as high on your low, you basically got a fish coming up from behind that grabs it not from the side, but comes from behind and grabs it. There's got to be enough sticking out there. If you only had a really small hook on there, you you wouldn't have enough um, to to stick in the fish's mouth. So uh, don't look at that and think that looks too scared because that's that is perfect. Three inch low, and I think I just said three or but it's a four o. Three inch low size four o hook. Um, and what you'll find, I have, I've got, there we go, 4-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 
Frio, that's a mixed bag, forget what it says on there, so that's a, a few different ones. Frio, 2 and it gives you the selection of sizes for um, two, two and a half and three, three inch uh, soft shads. And like I say, um, that's just one, but what I've got is somewhere. We'll do a smaller one. So we're two and a half inch shad, and we'll get a, uh, you can see, Stick it in my nose. And pull it out. Somewhere before the tail. Got quite a lot stuck out there. See the size difference. So you can see the size difference in my lows there. But the hook still sticks out. Um, quite a quite a large jig head. I'll have a look, we'll have a talk about jig heads in a little bit. But that's just a basic, if you want to go fishing, and you want to go catch some perch, uh, pike, whatever, either of those sizes, depends what, what setup you've got, that's what you want. Just something like that, go cast it, bounce it along bottom, fish it mid-water, whatever, and you'll find some fish. Uh, easy method. Right, so anybody starting up who's um, asking me what lures to buy, that's what I'm sort of suggesting. Don't have to be that very relaxed ones, but they're, they're a good, they're a good one. Jig heads, selection of jig heads, and go out. I, I will fish a on my perch setup. I'll fish a two and a half, and then maybe a, a two inch shad, and that's what I'll go fishing with. Um, and I, you know, you're going to catch, you're going to catch perch with those. Even, even this sort of size perch, you're going to take back. So, and um, don't think it won't. You don't have to go. A lot of people drop shot in. There's no drop shot stuff in this video. A lot of people go drop shot and you'll, you know, a lot of the times you're using really, really small lures and that's massive in comparison. Um, a lot of people will ask me how come, I'm not a specimen angler, but how come I catch bigger perch than, than they're catching when they're, you know, um, only catching small things and sometimes it's just because you want a bigger lure. That's a good size. But they'll take three inch, four inch, five inch lures will we'll perch. Right, so we'll have a look at jig heads. Easy. So I've got a selection. What you'll see that, um, Quite quite chunky ones, um, but you need to you need to match your jig heads to your waters. Now I've got some lighter ones, and we'll look at those in a sec. But what you want to do is is, is think about the waters you're fishing. So um, some of the canals that I fish are seven and eight foot deep. Um, if you watched uh, last week's Zander video, uh, I'm fishing canals that's only sometimes only three foot deep. So you need a different jig head for each. So if I'm fishing. Uh, that jig head, which is a well, that's an eight gram. If I'm fishing that eight gram jig head in, in a three foot canal, I'm just going to be banging bottom constantly, digging in, picking everything up off bottom, snagging up. It's just far too heavy. Um, however, if I'm fishing um, an eight to ten foot deep canal and it's a windy day and I'm trying to cast a long distance, then that's going to give me a lot better, it's easier to cast it and cast it further. Um, it's going to help me get get down in the water. You know, you've got eight foot of water. You've got to get that drag, drag your line down, um, and it'll help you keep in contact when it's windy. You know, you get a lot of bow in your line. The wind's pulling it, so that keeps your line taut and uh, stops that bow in your line. And you know, you keep your rod down, obviously. But um, that's that's helps. So that's good. It's the same thing you were fishing, um, like lakes and reservoirs and things like that. And you're gonna, probably going to be going with eight gram jig heads and probably even heavier sometimes. Know, 10 gram, 15 gram. I don't think nothing. I think using a 15 gram jig head depends where I'm fishing. It gets you down there, and it. And the other thing to think about is with the size of a jig head. The, the weight of a jig head is that um, it'll determine the speed that you're retrieving. So if I had, let's say, I had a one gram jig head on there, I'd be able to work it really slowly, and it'd probably be high up in the water. Be able to work it slowly. I've got an eight gram jig head. It's going to be much lower down in the water, and probably have to work it a lot faster to stop it from banging on the bottom. So it's, it's all about, so soft shads, it is simple, but it's also a little bit more, um, a little bit more thought involved where you've got to think about, you know, your jig head size, uh, your jig head weight, sorry, um, the diameter of your braid, if it's quite a thick diameter, that'll have more drag and it'll stop your line sinking, so you might need a heavier jig head, all those kind of things. Uh, so best thing to do when you're first starting up, um, get yourself a, a few two inch, two and a half inch, Copy toes, get some um, 
size 2.0 and 3.0 hooks and get them in size of something like 3 gram so you can fish it nice and light and maybe 7 gram or something like that but I'll often have two or three sizes of me at least. Um, I think I've got something like three, uh, something like three, eight, and fifteen or something. I've got, yeah, whatever. There's no, there's no rocket science to it. Uh, five gram two rows, so a bit of a bit of a variety. Um, but typically with the, with the, the copy toes, the paddle tail, it's quite a nice wiggle on it, and you, you don't really want to be working them a really sort of more of a faster moving lure, so. You can go with like, you know, 3 gram, 5 gram, which I guess is quite a good selection, good idea. A little bit heavier for deeper and windier days.